Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. And in today's video, Artak has finally arrived, the strongest login legendary of all time in Raid Shadow Legends. Perhaps, actually, perhaps, I'm going to show you a couple of the areas I've built him up for already. End game, extremely powerful. I think you're going to be really, really impressed. I am extremely impressed with this champion. Um, and uh, yeah, then we'll also have more videos throughout the week as well, showing a couple of different like early game budget teams, like going into, you know, normal or hard hydro with worse gear, that sort of stuff. I can't squeeze everything into this one video. So yeah, if you want to see more, let me know what you want to see and make sure that you're subscribed and all of the rest. Wow. I'm just, uh, I'm totally baiting you in. <laughs> this is like, it's not quite a pyramid scheme, but this is a sneaky scheme for sure. Anyway, let's check out Artak though. Uh, what is so good about this guy? Purifier, his A3, three turn cooldown, AOE attack, double hitter. It's going to put out a burn, 100% chance when buffed for two turns. We'll also restore his destroyed max HP and heal him for any HP burn blocked or resisted by the enemy team. For the most part, this is just sort of fixing his passive, which is whenever a HP burn buff, a debuff is activated, destroy his max HP by 5%, stacking up to 50%, which will increase his damage, critical damage, defense, and also his speed and resistance. Now, the thing is, when you actually break down the maths, look, the simple rule of thumb, he actually doesn't gain very much damage or critical damage. Like, this doesn't actually up his damage output very much at all. The reason being, it is destroying his max HP, and all of his damage is based on his max HP. So whenever he reduces his max HP, it actually reduces his damage, and this damage increase sort of balances it out. He does gain a little bit, I think around 75% destroyed max, H, uh, uh, max HP total. So when 25% has been destroyed or it's half stacked up, that's when it's sort of the sweet spot. I think he gains about 9% damage, something like that. But for the most part, it's not going to make a huge difference to his damage. What this is very good for, it means that as he destroys his max HP, he's actually going to gain a lot of defense. He'll become much tankier. And especially this, he's going to gain a ton of speed and a ton of resistance. If you destroy the full 50%, you'll actually get a bonus 100 speed, which is uh, just a gargantuan amount of speed. It makes a really big difference. The resistance is nice, but I'm not personally building around it at the moment. Um, so yeah, there we go. Anyway, look, he has the AoE burn, three turn cooldown, A3. His A2, this is where we get the activation and he can start to destroy bonus HP here, as it were. AoE attack, Dogs of War. Before attacking, instantly activate any HP burn debuffs on each enemy. So there's no weak hitting or anything like that. It will happen. And then also has a 75 bucket to 100% chance of putting decreased attack on all enemies for two turns. Very useful for Ice Golem, very useful just in general, and especially good in Hydra, where you can get that decreased attack on the Head of Wrath and reduce your damage taken. His A1 is also an AoE with a 35 bucket to 45% chance to extend the duration of any HP burn debuffs on each target by one turn. So it's a nice little synergy. You basically go A3 into an A2, then do his A1. If there's any HP burns left, he'll extend them a bit, get a bit more damage out, and then reapply, and, and so on and so forth. Very slick. How have I built him? Well, building him for some more of this endgame stuff, there's definitely a few different ways you could go. I don't think it's worth building him for pure damage. I've built his damage pretty high. It's not that important, though. He doesn't hit crazy hard. It's more about the effects, kind of same as, well, Ninja does hit very hard. Our attack is more about the effects, though. I've given him Relentless, which is very strong. Extra turns, just cycling through. He's going to actually be very tanky because of his high HP and this high defense and resistance and speed. He'll be very survivable. So going through all these extra turns, getting these extra AoE attacks is going to give us more bang for our book. And then Perception for Accuracy and Speed. He needs both of those, so it's pretty good, too. Um, and yeah, then what I've done with the stats, you can see I've put really good gear on him here for the most part. 250 speed. This is specifically for a spider team. I'll show it to you in a sec. 343 accuracy, which is decent. I like it to be a bit higher, but it's still pretty solid. That's for all of Doom Tower hard. That's for hard mode dungeons. It's a little low for Nightmare Hydra. It's plenty for Brutal Hydra. Bit low for Nightmare, but you still get away with it for the most part. Just, you know, when the Head of Suffering is in, you're going to get resisted a little bit. Um... 2,600 defense. This seems like pretty decent. Remember, he gets quite a bit of defense when it's from his passive. So getting some defense on him is really good. And then 74,000 HP. So op op options with this build, right? If you can't get this much damage or whatever, I'd be prioritizing the speed and the accuracy and maybe the HP and the defense. You could drop the crit damage, put him in crit rate gloves instead. 
Uh, you could, whatever, you could even ditch the crit rate, crit damage entirely if you need to and just focus on the effects, but it's, it's quite worth getting the crit rate if you can. And then for his masteries, what I've done is, is this pretty straightforward. The most important one is War Master. He's going to be pumping out AoE hits. We want all of those to be proccing War Master uh, and then extend his burns. This is really good too. It's going to make that uh, the burns last longer. He's activating them, so it will make them last longer. Help him extend them with the A1 because there'll be more burns still up. This is the way to go. Uh, so yeah, this is the build. A pretty straightforward build as well, I would say. Let me show you a couple of different places I've been using him. So... I have rebuilt my top spider team here. I was previously using about a 30 second farm team with Moranix. What we've switched to now is this team right here. It, With my current gear, it doesn't do the maximum speed every single time. We're actually a little reliant on War Master procs. So it's not fully there, but with a bit more gear, I could maybe switch out Drang for Ignatius. It will work out because Drang does not have War Master and he doesn't have crit or any damage he's built for ice golem solo so ice golem hard solo anyway what we need we've drank he uh, actually the fastest champion in the team is cold heart she's going to come in and nuke she's actually fairly gear intensive to make sure that she's going to do her max damage i have her five star awakened which helps a lot you want her to max out the enemy max hp damage on the spider which is about 1.4 something million uh, but she does a big enemy max hp hit just to do a bit of extra damage. That's it. Next up, Dren comes in. AoE Irresistible Burn. So it's 100%. Everything's getting burned. Sissia is going to be up next. She is going to explode the burns. Apply Weaken and decrease defense. Okay, she needs accuracy for that. Next up, we're going to have Artak come in. Explode the burns again and put out decrease attack. And then Royal Guard will be the slowest one at 245 speed here. He's going to do another enemy max HP nuke. So this is why I'm saying you could totally ditch the... Uh, damage on Artak, and you could let Royal Guard kill all the Spiderlings. That's fine. For me, you're going to see, because I did put damage on Artak, he will actually kill the Spiderlings, but it doesn't really matter, you know? Um, but yeah, here we go. Heart Seeker from Cold Heart maxes out that damage, which is great. We put burns on everything. Sissia does her thing. Then, here, boom, look at that damage from Artak. He kills all the Spiderlings, and it does damage to the boss. He actually gets an extra turn. This will definitely be a quick enough run. It's a little bit slower, actually, because I'm recording. It is a bit slower because I'm recording, but there you go. Let's do it again. Uh, what can happen? I've tested this a whole bunch of times. This run is basically impossible to fail. Um, we may fail to kill the spider with Royal Guard's turn, and the spider will then take a turn and go. Looks like we actually will this time. Royal Guard goes in this time. It's faster. 14 seconds. That's the maximum speed at 60 frames per second. And when you're recording on your PC as well, uh, with unlimited frames and not recording, I got it down to 13 seconds. It's sort of about the animation speed, basically, is what slows it down. Uh, worst case scenario, you don't kill the boss. He will, you know, attack you and heal up. He's probably going to kill Cold Heart. He might kill Royal Guard, but Artak easily tanks it. Look at Artak's HP, by the way. It's totally destroyed, but it's not. He actually does have health. It's a bug. This is a bug, right? So right now, his max HP is not entirely destroyed. It's actually not. It's just bugged. Um, so yeah, he's only supposed to destroy it to 50%, but it shows it going the whole way. It's weird. I'm trying to get a failure here. We might not, but yeah, this team is insanely good. It's not easy to replace. We act, wow, we actually did crazy damage there without decreased defense. Look, here we go. Okay, the boss takes a turn. You can see Artak, even though it says he's no HP, he survived the hit no problem. Uh, and now the run's going to be a bit slower, but Artak puts out burns. Uh, Cold Heart's going to do some damage. Drang will actually heal everyone up, which is cool, unessential. Sissia will put out some more burns. Artak will do an A1. The boss will hit us again, and the Spiderling should start, start taking turns now. Actually, no, Artak went in and killed them all. 39 seconds, but 40 seconds is the slowest. Because Artak's in Relentless, if he ever gets a Relentless turn, it's almost definitely going to make it, you know, 15 seconds, 18 seconds. Uh, worst case with a Relentless from Artak, you kill it 10 seconds faster, 30 seconds. Um, but yeah, most of the time, it's about a, what, 14 second run, uh, which is really, really good. So there you go. Uh, difficult to replace champions on this team. Sissia is quite important because of the decreased defense and weaken. Artak, this is what's so good about him, though. And this is where this team becomes more accessible to you guys. Artak is actually, let me let me switch up this uh, team example as well. Because he's a HP burn exploder, that's such a rare thing. Theodore the Savant and Sissia are the only two other champions that do it. So if we came into normal spider, uh, what would we do? 
Okay, so here we go. I finally got it working. Now, the problem is we would have to change our tax build. Uh, this is what I get for not preparing this particular showcase ahead of time. But you can see it very simply. The burns go out, our tax explodes. The problem right here, as you can see pretty visually, is that our tax simply does too much damage. And then he's so quick that he just blasts these spiderlings and he's, he's just destroying them with his raw damage. So you would need our tax to be a bit slower and you'd want him to not have damage. Because you can see right here, when he comes to blow up the spiderlings, he's actually killing them and you're not getting the full explosion. But other than that, it would work totally fine. So a lower damage Artak is going to work here just fine. You burn, you blow up the burns. You just want to make sure he doesn't actually kill the spiderlings. Because uh, if he does, that's bad. You see, the boss is going to survive and get a reset. But I've got plenty of videos on this type of team before using Sissia instead. It's the exact same concept. It works exactly the same, but just I have built Artak with too much damage and he's killing the spiders with his raw damage instead of the Mordecai burns doing all the damage. So that's what's going on there. So you might need to tweak your build depending on what you want to do. Like I said, oh, I'm missing some gear on him. That wouldn't have mattered here. Like I said, for me, that's not a priority. Now, let's come into Hydra. Woo what I've done for Hydra, I've tried a couple of different builds to show it out. So uh, let me jump over here for a second. Here we go. So first of all, what I did was, I did want to test him out as well, being boosted by a Shemail. But I did a few different tests. Actually, let me show you the first test I did, which was, I think, this one. Yeah, it was this one here. So this one, I threw him in to just my kind of in the place of Geomancer in the team that I normally use for Nightmare Hydra. We've got Elva, Duchess would be better. Uh, we've got Krisk, we've got Artak, and so on and so forth. So let's see how he compares in damage. I had to redo this because Husk was missing some gear. But we went through. All of Husk's uh, things were getting resisted. But... Went pretty well, like, you know, if we, uh, like, let me, uh, yeah, it went really, really well. Like, let's jump in, skip straight to the end. Give me your prediction. So Artak, he's up against both a Royal Guard and a Husk in terms of damage. What will do the most damage? And you can see we're sort of smashing through. Artak at this point gets eaten, but he gets broken free. You know, Royal Guard's hitting hard, <laughs> to put it bluntly, and so on. And I was, I was just clicking on the head right here and wondering why Husk, because uh, I took off one piece of gear, he didn't have enough accuracy. Oh yeah, it actually fell apart at the end and we almost wiped. But we did get through and we did 37 million. And there you go. In terms of the damage output, this shocked me, to be honest. Husk did 10 million. Royal Guard did 8.5. Artak did 14 million. That's insane. That is insane. Right, next up then, we went in, we put in a Shemail to remove the randomness of the fears, right? So this time we were removing the randomness of the fear. Let me speed this up. Okay, so no fears. Same thing. We took out Royal Guard, who is the weakest link, and we put this in. One thing to note about that, Artak doing that much damage. I fixed the gear on Husk as well. Artak doing so much damage. Look at the affinities of these heads. This rotation, we have two force affinity heads. There's actually three of the six possible heads are force affinity. That's the wrong affinity for Artak. He is going to miss burns on them. He is going to weak hit them and just do less damage to those heads, right? This is probably the worst rotation for Artak. It has the most force affinity heads. It's very, very bad. The fact that he's still putting out that much damage is absolutely insane. So you can see him here. This becomes very, very strong. Again, Elva is being boosted by the Shemail, so that's not really making a big difference. You see Artak is popping off with his extra hits. He's doing the damage. We skip on through to the end. This one was much more smooth, and I did cancel it out. And here we go. This time, this was a Shemail built for reasonable damage as well. He's doing three and a half million. He's built okay for damage. Not crazy, but pretty good. Husk, 10.8. Artak, this time, 18 million. Like, he is cranking damage like crazy. And then the final test I did was full auto. Um, here we go. And I actually went and walked the dog while this was going on. So I left him full auto in the lead. I have no idea what happened. Oh, server maintenance kicked in. Looks like we got wiped pretty early on, actually. Uh, not that early on. Yeah, stuff went wrong. I have no idea what happened in this run. I did see the damage at the end, though, when I eventually got back, which was over here. Oh, instantly pops up. Okay, hopefully I exited off. Or maybe I didn't. Popped off for a split second. Oh, no. Hang on. Here we go. Don't don't tell me server. Oh my god, it's blocking it the whole time. Did I exit off at the last second? I was still recording. Oh no! Well, look, 
Artak, you can just slightly see it. He did 21 million. Okay. Uh, out of the... What do we do total? 43 million. He did half of the damage of the team. That's insane. So he's really good there being Torment boosted as well. Uh, we are a little scuffed in this episode. I do apologize a few things going wrong. I will come back with more Artak teams. I just wanted to show you how good is he for Nightmare Hydra. He's actually incredible. He's incredible. He's, he's like doubling the damage of Husk. Husk is not in crazy gear, whereas Artak is. So he's in better gear, right? Husk is 225 speed, uh, 211 crit damage. So, you know, Husk is definitely lacking on the speed and maybe a bit on crit damage. So Husk would be a bit closer to him. But Artak, he's going to be doing at least 50% more. Like he's doing a lot. And he also has great utility. He helps you with the poison cloud with this. Does make Head of Wrath more dangerous. While at the same time, though, he brings decreased attack for Wrath. So Artak, he's definitely worth worth adding 100% to your Hydra teams. Absolutely. Um, and again, I'd be looking for good speed, good accuracy, and decent defensive stats. The crit rate is really nice too. The crit damage is a bonus. So work it out whatever way you want. I thought Relentless was great on him just to cycle through. It's worth cycling through because he's exploding the burns, right? And fixing himself with this too. So it's well worth running him in Relentless. A provoke is another good option if you don't have a good Provoker. Um, but yeah, I thought this sort of team, you know, with a Crisk on a three-turn Provoke, with a Husk, you could run something like Bivold, uh, something like that, anything like that. You can make it work and it's going to be real good. But yeah, Artak, did he impress me for Hydra? Yeah, absolutely. The guy's a monster. Uh, and it's a free burn exploder. I can't... Oh, look, Grizor, he's in the 10x today. Of course he is. Um, can't say that enough. A free, free... HP burn exploder. There's only two other champs in the game, Sissia and Theodore, that can do it. And like I said, you pull either Sissia, maybe even if you pull Theodore, but maybe mostly Sissia, you can do like a really quick spider hard farm as well, spider 10. Guys, thank you for watching. I hope it was interesting. I hope it was helpful. I will be back with more Artak videos later in the week, but that's my guidelines for building him. And I think he's absolutely worth it. This guy is a beast. He is a monster. He is insane. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all soon. Goodbye.